There's a network of Anglican schools reaching from Butchala country in the north in the Wide Bay to Combermere country south on the Gold Coast and west to Toowoomba and the lands of the Gaibal and Jarawe peoples. Welcome to your Anglican school. A school is a school, right? So why do some have the label Anglican? Well, what is it about being Anglican that makes your school distinctive? Each Anglican school has a unique foundational story. I wonder if you know the story of your place. Some began because a local community of Christians, called a church community, saw a need to provide educational facilities for the young people in their area. Some schools were started by religious orders, like the Society of the Sacred Advent. This society has a very particular mission for teaching and established schools which still live and work to the rhythms and ethos of the humble faith of the sisters in that community. Whatever the particular foundation story, each Anglican school is part of the Anglican Church in this place, southern Queensland. So let's go a bit deeper. The Anglican Church is part of the Christian faith, which has Jesus at the centre of the story. What's this got to do with education? A good question. Jesus really connected with the people of his world and cared enough to draw them towards greater understanding of the nature of God, of the nature of the world and universe, the meaning of their scriptures and their own uniqueness as individuals. The key Christian text, the New Testament, starts with four books called Gospels, which talk about the life of Jesus and tell the Jesus story from four different perspectives. In all four Gospels, there are stories describing Jesus as a teacher, a learned person who took care to meet people where they were, meet them in their despair, in their ordinariness, in their woundedness, their pride, their confusion. In all Jesus' teaching moments, we see radical care, rigorous inquiry and a bottom line authenticity that served to model a life of humility, meaning and sacred purpose. It's this example that has inspired the Anglican Church throughout the ages to encourage people to develop their unique gifts, to inquire, to create, to explore, to experiment. To illustrate this, Let's check out a wonderfully complex story in the Gospel according to John, chapter 4. It takes place at a well, the source of water, and therefore life in the desert community. The disciples are off in town buying food. They've been on the road for a while and need to take a break. Jesus asks a Samaritan woman for a drink, and she asks him, how he can approach her. Traditionally, these people were enemies. It went back years, a generational thing. He then talks with this woman for a long time. She asks questions, he asks questions. They use metaphors about water and living water to describe the kind of life Jesus offers. And all the time, they circle around the truth the nature of her and the nature of him. There is a boldness to the conversation and an honesty that reflects the mutual respect they must have had to engage in such a way. In the end, because of that woman's testimony to the people of her town, Social barriers are redefined. People are open to Jesus the outsider and come to see him as the source of hope and transformation they've been waiting for. This is the theology of education that inspires the Anglican Church to invest energy in schools with mutual respect a spirit of bold inquiry and space to be authentic. 
People can learn the nature of themselves, develop their gifts, embrace community and build up the common good. Generations of Anglican Christians have been inspired by the example and teaching of Jesus to provide educational opportunities for others. The English village church model, which we inherit, meant that the parish centre was pastorally responsible for the lives of the people within their area, whether they attended church or not. This meant providing places and people to care for the sick and those suffering hardship, providing housing and building and running schools. The Australian Anglican Church model has well and truly evolved from those beginnings, but that sense of purpose at its core. Anglican churches and schools across our diocese spend much time and energy connecting with their communities. So keep an eye out when you're out and about in the suburbs or town, and you'll notice that Anglican parish churches are in the business of education on all sorts of levels. Some churches offer local English conversational classes, advocate to change attitudes about social issues, the climate, refugees, host refugee action groups, have Bible study and faith formation groups. So if this kind of grassroots education happens at a local parish level, Anglican schools provide a next level way to promote learning and value reason and make the world a better place. So, what do you think is at the heart of Anglican schooling? What's the essential work? Like aged care is about care, Anglican schools are about education. Our vocation is education. We bring to education a profound vision of humanity, possessors of an innate dignity which is grounded in the image of God, visible in Jesus and present in every human being. There are six big clues then that Anglican schools in this place are inspired and informed by the person of Jesus and that long tradition of education. On the Anglican Schools Commission website, these points are called markers. So let's take a look at these unifying characteristics. Firstly, they are incarnational. It's a technical word, so stay with me. We can think of it this way. When Jesus was born, God became human. This is a big moment. The creator of the universe blesses the world by coming into it in person. This idea, God becoming human, is called incarnation. God took on the nature and form of humanity. The model of Jesus provides the values that inspire Anglican schools. Kindness, generosity, love, justice, fairness, truth, hospitality service, compassion, forgiveness. Living them, making them real and visible is essential to the identity of an Anglican school. So first, incarnational. Next, Anglican schools value and promote the intellectual. We embrace a comprehensive liberal education Anglican schools are unapologetically committed to the intellect, the relentless, fearless pursuit of truth, the discipline of academic rigour, the meticulous scientific endeavour, critical analysis and philosophical accountability, unhindered artistic exploration and expression, bold ventures of entrepreneurial development and more. So we're committed to the intellect. We recognise that intelligence is diverse and multiplanar, and the mind is not all there is. The person is an integrated being whose head is inseparable from heart and hand. 
and the web of life in which we're all embedded. Anglican schools intentionally engage students' mind, heart and soul for the purpose of being in the world in a way that enriches a greater and common good. And thirdly, Anglican schools are pastoral. We care for all. Christians celebrate that humans are made in the image of a creative God. Every person bears the image and likeness of God. Anglican schools want to know each person and care for their well-being and the social and cultural web in which they live. This applies to our staff as well as our students. Everyone should feel like they belong, are known, are safe and able to thrive. Fourth marker to Anglican schools. We're missional. We have a mission to influence people for good. We intentionally engage in Christian formation to allow students and staff to grow in their capacity to serve others with love and grace. There's also a grand mission as learning communities, Anglican schools in this diocese encourage service to work alongside the marginalised and to practice justice for all and care for creation. Jesus taught what it meant to be a neighbour and we don't get to choose our neighbours and our communities strive to model that compassion and commitment to others. A fifth marker is that we are faithful. We are faithful to the Christian story, living it in a way that invites discovery. We're faithful to the scriptures and the seasons, saints and celebrations of the Christian story and the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. We're faithful to a calendar and rhythm of spiritual awareness that runs under and outside the school timetable. This awareness is practiced through patterns of reflection, chapel, prayer, art, architecture, stillness, symbol, silence, festival, sacrament, storytelling, celebrations, blessing and gratitude. All are invited to participate in liturgical traditions that are ordered, musical, creative, rooted in scripture, sacramental, intellectually robust and connected to the school's pastoral practices and missional service. And finally, the sixth marker of Anglican schools is that we are hospitable. We invite and welcome all, and hospitality is given to every student, no matter the race, gender, sexuality, ideology, ability, disability, or religion, whatever. No one is excluded. The only precondition for membership in our schools is a willingness to respect others and to respect the Anglican ethos and the gospel, which is its source. Okay, our schools each have their own rich character, story, history and culture. These marks of identity can be seen throughout them all, focused on education, driven by a vision of humanity formed in the image of God. The identity of each school is turn to one essential question about purpose. What are we educating for? One way to describe this purpose is that it's about making visible what is true, making visible what is good, beautiful, gracious and true. So we educate for dignity. Honouring the student, the subject, and the space that's created between them and the teacher. We educate for wisdom and a deep, deep knowing. We educate for hope, developing values tuned to the common good. We educate for justice and form character and practices for healthy, peaceable communities. 
This is a huge vision. In the end, though, we can summarise things like this. The Anglican Church, Southern Queensland, is inspired by the teaching and life of Jesus, whose presence in the world brings light and liberation. Our school's commitment to education participates in this work. And the liberation education brings is for the flourishing of students for a flourishing world. Whatever role you play in the school in which you work, be sure that Anglican people throughout the diocese hope and pray for you. That the history, traditions and pursuit of truth and reason that underpins the Anglican Church will continue to be inspiring and life-giving to students and staff in your school. God be honoured in the grace and truth you grow into. The common good be increased by you. The light you share enlighten others. Dignity and wisdom, hope and justice abound. And the earth be blessed. Hello and welcome to Anglican Identity. But what does Anglican mean? And we are a community called by God. It's about faith, about family. And with that comes all the beauty and the wonderful parts, but some of the messy parts as well. The scriptures are the most important source of our knowledge about Jesus. Without Jesus, there would be no Christianity and no Anglican church. God gave us minds and expects us to use them. People from all walk of life celebrate together, join together and live together. Anglican comprehensiveness means that the Anglican Church is broad and makes space for many voices. We have bishops and parishes and it's clear and people feel held. The most important things that a bishop can do is to serve as a focus for unity. What does it mean for a national church to be autonomous? Thread Together is a charity that is um, involved in getting clothing out to people um, who are doing it tough. Baruna Farm is an urban farm project located in the grounds of St Francis College here in Milton. Looking after these people in this way is just mission in action. And I think it's also a reminder of who, who we are and we are individuals, we are people, we are children of God.